The best lessons I think we've ever learned throughout our time is not our wins, but our failures. And I think that's a, a pretty good way to sum up what we're going to talk about today. And this really all started uh, actually yesterday. There was a, a tweet that was put out from uh, Bitcoin Magazine. I had saw it and I had just made a comment. And Bitcoin Magazine talked about, hey, g- not so great news. Just in, uh, judge rules that BlockFi users gave up legal rights to their Bitcoin by using the platform and all the 300 million of crypto deposits are now property of BlockFi. And I was taking a look at this and I thought to myself, well, you know, that's a bummer. I think we've seen a lot of different problems that have come about, the Voyager, the Celsius, the FTX, and everything else in between. And I just made a comment. I said, you know, sorry. Sorry, BlockFi users. And somebody with the handle Dude Ohio, and he said, well, it was probably BlockFi's plan the entire time. The new class that comes in the next bull run must be made aware. I said, yeah, you know what? I agree. Because, uh, you know, we were warned in 2017, we were warned about Mt. Gox. And everybody just pretty much said, whatever, Boomer, this will never happen. We have all these new safeguards in place and it's a new era and you don't know what you're talking about and it'll be okay. But some people did live up to that, that credence and said, hey, you know, this could happen again and it sure did. So I thought to myself, this would probably be a good time to remind people of all the problems that we have gone through to lead it to up to the next bull run, which I think is going to happen in 2025. And if I, I don't think if we don't do this, unfortunately, I hate to say it like this, but it's true. Uh, people have the memories of goldfish and they're going to come into this sector, especially when Bitcoin goes through its halving in April of 2024. Once it happens, everything that we talk about, the new class will be like, whatever, boomer, that's so dumb. That's not ever going to happen again. I'm telling you, it's going to happen again and again and again. We're going to talk about a lot of things. So the first thing we have to talk about, of course, catching everybody up. And of course, the problems that we've had and the lessons that we learned is Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox, if you're not familiar, was started in 2010 by Jed McCaleb. Jed McCaleb, who of course the XRP Army knows about, the co-founders of uh, Ripple and XRP, and then he moved on to Stellar. He launched Mt. Gox in 2010. It was sold later on but he was responsible for it. And Mt. Gox was responsible for more than 70% of all Bitcoin transactions in 2013. By 2014, it had collapsed spectacularly. To put that into context, the Bitcoin white paper came out in October, 2008. The Genesis block happened in January, 2009. And just that short amount of time, 70% of all Bitcoin transactions happened on this one particular exchange, Mt. Gox. In February 2014, Mt. Gox abruptly halted all withdrawals from its platform, citing technical issues with security concerns. And of course, we all know it had been hacked. And guess how much it hacked? I had fully forgotten about this. It was almost a million Bitcoin. 850,000 Bitcoin were stolen. That's a lot. That's That's not chump change. And then in 2018, the Japanese court ruled that Mt. Gox assets should be liquidated and distributed among its creditors, a process that is still ongoing. So look, this is a lesson that we need to definitely tell all of our counterparts moving forward is that unless you don't want to sit around with your funds all locked up, like the Mt. Gox people, like the Celsius people, like the Voyager people, like the BlockFi people, like the FTX people, you should probably use a cold storage device like a ledger and take it off of exchanges. That's the first one. Now let's get back up to speed to somewhere a little more in my range, which was 2017. In 2017 and 2018, there was this thing called ICOs, initial coin offerings. And I see the same thing happening with meme coins right now. (laughs) It's amazing to me. But everybody's a gambler, and I'm okay with that. Heck, I lived in Vegas for two years. I can appreciate the gamble. But just remember, you're gambling. So back in the day, 2017, ICO firms paid themselves $24 billion. Here's what happened. So back in that day, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just, just say it like this. I lived through that time. And I would say that the ICOs, it was, it was long on white papers and short on delivery. Everybody talked about, yeah, it doesn't really do much right now, but this is what it could do. And you're going to invest into what it actually could do. 
And I think the same thing that's being said right now is the same thing that was said back then. And all that money is going to flow into one way, the people that own those projects. It's not going to go to you. It's not going to go to all your friends and family. You are exit liquidity, just like in the ICOs. I could be wrong, but it seems like how things just repeat. So the ICOs, <laughs> 2017, 2018, token startups raised over $24 billion. And they paid $1.5 billion to its team members because they got to get paid first. Now, holdings over all these ICOs could have been $80 billion during the peak in December of 2017. But they still sold out a lot of bag holders. Based on liquid spot prices, current holdings for ICOs are roughly $5 billion. And this is where it gets good and something to actually remember. The most unfortunate teams, the ones that didn't cash out, were SALT and the IoT chain, Internet of Things. Both projects saw a 97% decline. Other projects lost over 90%. So all those ICOs that came out, roughly 90% have no value or just gone. And I want you to remember this. There was this project called ArcBlock. I have no idea what that is. Metal and PO.ET three of the arguably most hyped projects of 2017. In the comment section, if you remember this being hyped, put it in there. But if those are the ones that are being hyped the most in 2017, nobody knows about those right now, which is the same thing that's gonna happen with a lot of projects in the future. So just remember that. This is where I get that dash of salt. Dash of salt, this is what I've talked about as far as like dollar cost averaging. Sometimes when you dollar cost average, you'll never make it back. I mean, Dash, not to pick on Dash, I'm sure, I think it still has some developers working on it, but it topped out a long time ago, even, even 2021, and then it just kind of went down. So if you bought it all the way back here, it's just kind of flatlined. It peaked a little bit, but off it goes. And then Salt, unfortunately, peaked in 20 end of 2017 and just flatline for the rest of the time. So just be careful with what you're getting into and just remember that uh, everything, everything can go to zero. So that's our lesson for there. And then also moving forward, let's talk about this cycle. Luna. So Luna was the next big thing, as I think we all remember. And I want you to remember this, you who are watching this in the future. Uh, this was going to be the big, the big show and it collapsed. It collapsed. And I want you to remember these, these things. I lost all my life savings. I should have cashed out when it was a hundred bucks. Then I would have been up 25,000. I lost over 450,000. I cannot pay the bank. And then also this one said suicide is the only way out for me, which is pretty dark. I hate to say it, but it is what was said. So one of the lessons here is take profits along the way. Don't get caught up in the diamond hands narrative. And again, everything can go to zero. And as we can see, what's interesting to me though is that this just happened roughly a year ago, roughly a year. And we can see that here's Terra Luna, which has been rebranded, just dead. And then here is the Terra Classic, which it was uh, tracking at a dollar stable coin, and now it's at a uh, whopping three cents. So there's just that part as a reminder. And then let's get to my little issues. So all these things that we talk about are all my lessons. Some of you have avoided them, some of you have not. Here's mine, this specifically. This is the one that I get called out the most on, Voyager. So Voyager was a great platform. I must admit, I loved it. It was easy to use. It was a brokerage. It would uh, plug into all the different uh, exchanges. It was the hotels.com of cryptocurrency and digital assets. And uh, it worked pretty well until it didn't. And Voyager, unfortunately, made a very dumb mistake, which was they gave an uncollateralized loan to Three Arrows Capital for $630, $640 million. And that sunk them. And it just takes one bad business decision, one colossally bad business decision to sink the whole ship. So the lesson here is that 
even though that you believe in something like I believe in Voyager and I believe in these projects, it can all go, go down. And there's things that are going to happen behind the scenes that you'll never know about until it's too late. So if you do these things, just remember that as time goes on, it's better to diversify just a little bit instead of putting everything, all your eggs into one basket. And this also would go back to the Mount Gox situation. Probably should take that off of any exchanges. So what's going on with Voyager right now? Well, they went through FTX to try to get uh, bought out. That fell through. They went through Binance US and that's uh, three months ago. It was looking pretty good until the government stepped in and said, hey, you're using a v VGX token. We believe that is a security. We're gonna stop that. Waited three more months and then Binance US backed out because of the unclear regulatory certainty in the United States. So they said, fine, we got no bidders. We've got no buyers. Let's liquidate, which is what I said a long time ago, but whatever. So as of May 8th, 2023, this is how much Voyager users, including myself, who have a nice five, almost six figures locked up in there, will get about 35% back. I'll be honest with you, I'm happy to get anything back. And as a great lesson, again, I think they would be doing just fine if it wasn't for one bad, one colossally bad decision. So that is Voyager, Celsius. Celsius, again, uh, I've had Mashinsky on the channel numerous times, matter of fact. And uh, he talked about how great it was and how it was just, you know, just put it on here and gain some yield. Of course, we know that didn't work out. Awful situation. I have more funds on there, which is a shame. You know, we talked about diversification, not putting all your eggs into one basket. <laughs> so I had it on Voyager and Celsius and a couple other exchanges. Well, those are gone. And what's going on now with Celsius is they're trying to find a buyer. I know some people in the Celsius community think it's going to happen. I hope it does. But this is from Michael Arrington, uh, TechCrunch founder, and also one of the potential bidders at Fahrenheit. And he put this out on uh, Thursday, Goat Rodeo, because they're, right, they're going right now through uh, the buyout process. And uh, what does goat rodeo mean? Well, goat rodeo is a slang term for something going totally, unbelievably, disastrously wrong. Nothing left to do but to sit back and watch the train wreck that is. And uh, somebody named Old Spide said, hey, Rob, can you do an update on what's going on with Celsius? And I said, I would do it, but here's the people I follow. And I think you should follow too. Aaron Bennett, Simon Dixon, Cam Cruz, Pete No Stop, and Tiffany Fong. And... Uh, they said, that's great, but can you just kind of break it down for us? I said, sure, why don't we just ask these guys because they follow us all the time. I said, let's ask everybody. And uh, where'd it go? And Cam Cruz came to the rescue and said, yeah, customers with custody or withhold accounts are eligible to opt into settlements via the app to make withdrawals. Everyone else has no definitive timeline for actions. If you don't know what custody or withhold are, you're probably an earned customer. So that's what's happening there. So again, lesson learned, don't get too caught up, diversify, don't leave anything on exchanges, not your keys, not your crypto, moving forward. BlockFi. So we just talked about this in the very beginning. You know, BlockFi, uh, that's seven, eight months ago, actually fell, filed for bankruptcy, November 28th, 2022. And right now, again, here's what's going on. BlockFi came in and said, look, or the judge said, look, if you invest in the BlockFi, uh, you gave up your right for Bitcoin. It's now the property of BlockFi. Even though the whole point of BlockFi was to gurn yield. And you kind of felt like it was a uh, savings account, just like Celsius. Well, same thing happened here. I will say this. Uh, not Meme sent me an email and uh, BlockFi put out information that said that uh, they will not be doing any type of retail clawbacks, which I think is a step in the right direction. So at least they have that going for them. Also, FTX, the same time that uh, BlockFi fell down, which everything was like a, a domino effect. Uh, FTX fell in November 2022 and uh, declared bankruptcy. What's going on with that? Nothing has moved. Nothing's going on. People still have things locked up. And the only thing that we know of right now is SPF is trying to dismiss 10 of 13 criminal charges against him. It's amazing how things have moved forward for Sam. 
And it's also amazing the amount of covers and all the different accolades that were thrown on Sam. Ah, if we just, if we just would have known then what we know now. And this will leave me my last points. Be careful with predictions, public versus private actions and billionaire strategies versus your strategy. What I'm talking about is this. Tim Draper, let's just go with the predictions. Predictions are worthless. They are. They're great for clickbait. I'll tell you that right now. Everybody wants to know a, a prediction, which is fine. I mean, it gives people hyped up. That's great. But they're worthless, quite honestly. This is Tim Draper. Tim Draper is a pretty smart guy. He's an early investor into Uber and some big names. Bitcoin, of course, being one of them. He snatched up Bitcoin quite early for, for quite a low amount from the U.S. government. But he's made this prediction numerous times that, predict, that uh, Bitcoin will get to 250000 And at first he said by t beginning 2023. Now he says, eh, end of 2023. I got to tell you, just because somebody's smart and they make a smart decision at one point doesn't mean that they're a genius for their entire life. Okay? Nobody is infallible. Let's just say that. Tim Draper, one of the first investors in Theranos. Remember Elizabeth Holmes? He still believes in her. Still says, she didn't lie to me. And I'm thinking to myself, she lied to everybody, pal. And if you don't know who that is, it's this lady. Crazy lady with the big eyes who uh, pretty much scanned everybody and was on Forbes' list. This is also another lesson. Don't get too caught up in the accolades that has been heaped upon people. There's Sam on Forbes, 30 under 30. There's Elizabeth Holmes. There's a guy from WeWork, for his name. And this is also from Forbes. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank is, uh, was one of America's best banks for the fifth straight year, even though they just collapsed. Of course, this was a long time ago. So again, be careful with all these things. Be careful with what you think of you know, as far as people go. And these are predictions because usually they're wrong. Also, be very careful with people who are like assured that they're totally right. Never seems to work out like that way. Also, private versus public perceptions. I want to make sure, sure everybody is aware of this. Bitcoin Miami is coming up. Looks to be a fun event. Peter Thiel was speaking at it last year. Uh, Peter Thiel, don't know, another big, huge investor. Uh, started PayPal and a host of other companies. And he went on stage and talked about how we have, there's going to be a war coming and, and Bitcoin is the best thing ever and hold on to it. And it's awesome and fantastic. A month ago, his fund unloaded over a billion dollars worth of crypto investments before he spoke at Bitcoin Miami. Now, I'm not saying that he is wrong for doing that, but just be aware that the things that people say in public versus what they do in private with their businesses are two different things. Now, I'm sure Peter could sit down and say, well, you know, I still believe in Bitcoin. That's, that wasn't, that's not in question. I was selling it and I still believe in it, but we just didn't really talk about that on stage. Kind of a buzzkill, if you think so. So be aware of what's going on in public versus private, the things that are happening. And also as a reminder, Peter Thiel's a great investor. I mean, he turned $2,000, which was all of his, PayPal stock, which was worth nothing, turned into $5 billion. <laughs> That's pretty good. How do you do that? Uh, there's a video be be below. This is why I have a Roth IRA. But uh, when you put it in there, it comes out tax-free. The guy made $5 billion tax-free. Not too bad. And then lastly, MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor. I have nothing against Michael Saylor. I think he's good for the industry. I will say that. But I just want you to remind you of there is a vast difference between my goals and your goals. There's a vast difference between a billionaire, Michael Saylor, and his strategy and his goals to potentially a shop owner in Colombia just trying to make ends meet. So this is why when we say not financial advice, we can't, anybody on here can't give you financial advice. We don't know your situation. There's a huge difference between what I want to do and what you want to do. There is a massive difference between the strategy that Michael Saylor is implementing and what you potentially could implement. So when people say, well, well, he won't sell, he won't sell Bitcoin. He won't. 
Uh, probably not. Who knows? I have no idea, actually. But remember, here's his strategy. His strategy is like, look, I'm going to hold on to Bitcoin for as long as I possibly can because it is the best thing ever. There is no second best, right? However, you know, there are strategies that he can incorporate, that we can all incorporate, that are a little bit more maybe beneficial to him as far as dollar amounts because, you know, he's dealing with a billion dollar company. MicroStrategy ops for Bitcoin wash trading loophole tax harvesting. I do this too. I sell my crypto and I buy it right back because right now Bitcoin and crypto is considered property and there is no wash trading issue here in America. I don't know what it is in the rest of the world. But MicroStrategy did this. They sold 704 Bitcoins before repurchasing 810 Bitcoins two days later. That's a massive tax write-off and good for them and good for them. But again, if it's all about diamond hands hold forever and this is the thing i'm gonna do you can do that that's fine i'm just saying just be aware that there's a little difference between potentially what you are doing to what a billionaire might be doing to what a people who, you know throughout the entire world are trying to do and what they believe it to be if bitcoin could be accepted everywhere fantastic i would use it all the time and then here's the next question though uh, do you see bitcoin as being uh, a medium of exchange or just a store of value? Because we just saw that medium of exchange. Rates went up pretty high, $20, $30 per transactions. Hopefully we can implement Lightning and move on from there. But again, just be aware, there's a big difference between what's going on and what you want to do. My goals aren't your goals and so on and vice versa. And this will leave me to my last point. I know this sounds very cynical, but like George Carlin says, inside every cynical person, there is a disappointed idealist. <laughs> I'm somewhat at that stage. I'm disappointed in the things that went on. I'm disappointed in the fact that, uh, to take these lessons a little bit faster, and I'm disappointed in the fact that if I don't remind people of these problems and these issues, I think that we're just doomed to repeat them, but that's okay. So this is what led me to my rules. So you may notice that underneath me are these rules. This is what led me to this. It's all gone. Meaning everything that you invest in, just expect it to be gone. Just expect to lose it all. You won't feel so awful. And it will also stop you from doing something stupid like selling your house and your kids and your kidneys to purchase tomato coin or whatever new hot shiny object is out there. That's ridiculous. Uh, everything's a scam. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. It saved me a lot of funds throughout time. Uh, don't leave anything on exchanges. What we just talked about with Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, FTX, and of course, Mt. Gox. We put it into cold storage as best we can. If you're a trader, that's on you. I wouldn't leave everything on exchanges. But of course, yeah, you have to leave some on exchanges. I'm not speaking to everybody. I'm not a trader. Don't use leverage. That's just my rule. You can, you're welcome to use 100x leverage, have fun. And lastly, like we just talked about with Luna and some other things across the way, take some profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits and that's the big thing. And that'll lead me to my last and final point. We'll go into a little, little chatty chat in a bit. It seems like everything happens, bad stuff happens in the bull run. All the stuff that we just took, I mean, Mt. Gox with Mt. Gox, right? But the ICOs that happened in 2017, 2018, those were at the height of the bull market. Uh, the Luna, as everybody aped into that, and then, of course, they collapsed. Uh, the FTX, the Celsius, and uh, the Voyager, and all those things trying to you know, keep up with the Joneses. All these things seem to happen as things peak and get overheated. Now, I believe the next bull run is in 2025. I could be wrong. Could be, I don't know, could be tomorrow. Who knows? But I've taken a look at certain metrics. There's a video. There's a link in the description. Looks just like this. Why and when I'm selling 80% of my crypto. Watch that video. And once I hit those, those points, those technicals, those indicators, I'm going to get out of a lot of situations. And then once everything gets overheated and crazy, I'm not going to be there. And this channel is going to go away. And the channel is going to go away throughout the whole time that everything heats up. Because I don't want to be 
one of those people that just talks about it and everything's going to be great and crazy and it's going to be awesome and just keep going and I will never hit the top. But I'll tell you this, if I step away from the channel, hopefully it'll allow some of people to think to themselves, hmm, remember that video where people didn't take profits and they got into some crazy ICOs and they did some crazy things and maybe it's a good time to step away because things are overheated. So that's the plan. The plan is to do that. This is the most rational part we can be at is right now when things aren't overheated. And then what will happen is as uh, things cool off and hopefully the craziness doesn't settle in and hopefully not everybody loses everything in this monstrous time, I'll come back. A lot of people just come in the bull run and make videos and talk about how great it is and they disappear in the, in the bear. I'll come back in the bear and everything starts to fall off. And that's the plan. So that's it. So that's it, everybody. That's it for today. So I'll probably put this in uh, on the website, uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. Hopefully people will watch it and understand that uh, prices don't go up all the time and that uh, there's some rules to follow. And usually it's just, it's just time. That's it. So look, that's it for today. Uh, shoot, I forgot to say it. Uh, happy Mother's Day. All the mothers out there. Got to call my own mom. So uh, that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. This isn't a set it and forget it type of situation. I think you should be around. You should learn as much as you possibly can.